So in, t in 2009, the very notion of leadership took quite a battering in the UK, almost on all fronts, on all sectors. Um, and um, so we asked a lot of people who were pretty well at the heart of things, who must have seen an enormous amount of what was going on and reflected on it a great deal, to come today and just talk to groups of our alumni and answer their questions about what they think they've learnt in 2009, which could potentially be useful to people as we face the challenges of 2010. What have we learnt in 2009 about leadership that is helpful? Um, so this film really well, captures some of the things that they said. Another thing that characterised last year, in a sense, was it became the year of the personal. Some of that was driven by uh, the MPs' row, but then that percolated out to, to, to many other organisations, particularly public organisations. And that touched on, for me, the boundary between the public and the private. How much of my what I used to think of as private information actually really is public information. People have a right to know, you know, w what I spend on hotels, what I spend on taxis. Actually, I do think that is public interest information. It still feels slightly difficult when that is put in the public domain. We decided to do that um, because I think transparency is important. It is part of generating trust and confidence. But it's not without a sort of personal side. So, for instance, when journalists are asked, well, where exactly does she stay in London? What is her address? I personally feel I don't want to know. I don't want people to know exactly where I stay. That does feel quite private. But I think there's a wider thing that uh, personal attack, wider implications that personal attack can have. And I certainly experienced quite a lot of personal attack. Uh, over the last year and that is it begins to sort of challenge regardless of what you think about what people are saying and they can be telling absolute lies it begins to challenge your kind of inner narrative about who you are um, and and I think it's a real challenge to resilience personal resilience what did we get wrong on leadership I think we get wrong that too many people thought about what they thought the audience wanted to hear rather than what they actually thought um, I think that was point one. I think point two was people had less visibility on what they thought the future was going to bring. So they actually were dealing with a degree of uncertainty in a way in which they'd never had it before, um, certainly in the business world. Whether that was true in the political world, I don't know. But in the business world, you actually didn't know whether you were going to sell anything tomorrow or not. And therefore, it was difficult to take... Um, it's difficult not to take knee-jerk decisions that then turned out to be wrong with the benefit of hindsight. Um, what is the lesson out of that? I think the lesson out of that, if you now look back on 2009, is if you stick to your core principles, actually they will get you through, whether that's your business model or your customer base or whatever. I think that's stick to your core has stood people in good stead. Secondly, do you really know your business and do you really know your people? If you look at the places where it got most wrong, a lot of the people at the top of those organizations ended up saying, I didn't know we were doing that. Yeah? I didn't know that that was part of what we were doing. So that, I think that's true in the political world as well, um, is that something that therefore that says, how's your chain of command work? Um, how do you delegate responsibility? Because people can't manage everything every day of the all day long, which I think people thought they could be superheroes and do that, so you've got that set up right. Um, and I think the other bit is, are you communicating? Um, and are you communicating with the people in your organization? Um, and are you communicating honestly? And I think the last bit then is, I think people confuse leadership with democracy, and leadership isn't the same thing as democracy, and actually you can't you have to stand up and say, I've made a decision, will you judge me by it? Rather than go around canvas opinions and then play back a canvassing of opinions as a decision. And I think that's, that was, a lot of people got that one very wrong. Do I think there is a crisis of leadership? Yes, I do. Um, and I think it is ultimately um, a crisis of trust. Um, and those two, uh, I think, are absolutely inextricably linked. Um, I think leadership um, is about creating followership and followership can only be created in every sense of the word when there is trust in where you are leading, in you as an individual and into what you're trying to achieve. 
So I do think we have a, a challenge around leadership because we have a challenge around trust. Um, and when you look at the business and the business sector, um, there is empirical evidence and data that uh, shows the, the trust in the business sector, in, in leaders in business, has never been lower since data has been collected in, 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 this, in this arena. It is a question of almost a part of the definition of leadership for me, braveness. Um, I'm not sure whether leadership exists without that. Uh, so maybe it's not that leaders need to be more brave, but maybe that we had forgotten what leadership is all about. Um, when you think about leadership, or when I think about leadership, um, or people ask me, um, what does leadership mean? I often, I often go back to, to them and say, if it doesn't hurt, you may not be leading. Leadership is tough. Leadership will take courage. Um, leadership will take you into places where you take decisions where the risk, and including the personal risk, might be high and where you will have to take courageous decisions and will have to live with the consequences, possibly seeing the consequences already and despite that taking a decision that you believe is the right decision and the right point to make and the right influence um, to have on the organization. Very often leadership means you deliver messages that other people don't want to hear because you, you might not be leading um, otherwise because you're just complying. And leadership is about creating space and entering new space creating new perspective and new meaning and being able to innovate at all kinds of levels. And you don't do that if you don't bring new different perspectives to, to, to the place and very often uncomfortable ones. Personal resilience in a crisis is a real issue and that's why um, the model of leadership is not one of heroic leadership. It's about uh, teams of people and building the capability of teams so that you can share the load and you can share the response. If it's all on one person, that person will be completely exhausted and won't be able to lead the organisation out of um, the problems of 2009. So if in 2009 you've built a team that is complementary and actually has a unity of purpose, then you'll be in a better place in 2010. You have to learn as a leader to have a rest sometimes, to step back sometimes and let the good people who work for you do it. Perhaps the most important one of all is that when you're leading an organisation, don't just read the rule book. Be really concerned about the values that people have, um, which um, are actually what matters at the end of the day. The number of times we had politicians saying, well, I was only following the rules, when it was clear that the rules were nowhere within the moral acceptability, if you like, of the majority of uh, uh, the pu public, uh, um, is, is, is just, um, you know, it's, it's too many to be, to be gone through. Um, and that um, argument, I was only just following the rules, never, didn't convince then, and it won't convince in future. So understand what the rules are there for, what, it, what are the principles and values that underpin them, and hold them close to your heart and make damn sure that everybody else working for you understands and lives them out fully too. It, leadership isn't dead. <laughs> leadership is, simply needs to be reinterpreted and re-expressed in ways which are suitable, right, for the, for the new times. Um, so don't give up out there. Um, you know, don't think that if you're in a position of leadership, um, it's a moment to um, hang up your boots and walk away from the game. Um, I'm sure none of those who are um, associated with common purpose would ever do that anyway. Uh, far too energetic and imaginative a bunch. Um, but uh, um, do be, um, um, yeah, be, be ready to learn, be inspired and at the end of the day be true to yourself.